G'day guys and welcome back to the channel. Now today we're doing something a bit different, something I don't normally do, but Epic Rap Battles of History decided to return today and they have returned directly into my wheelhouse. Now for those of you who know me, I am politically on the uh, rather hard left of things, not too crazy like uh, some of the idiots you see on Twitter, but I'm still relatively out there. And my two most recent videos have been discussing both the Holocaust and the America First movement and isolationism, both of which were heavily influenced by Mr. Henry Ford. And so for Epic Rapidals of History to drop this particular video on me today, I felt like it deserved a reaction from me. And you know, it's really fun because I actually really love battle rap and I've made references to Epic Rap Battles of History in my own videos and my own scripts as jokes and references, etc. So it's about time I actually tackle them, to be honest. So anyway, let's do a complete breakdown. I'll break down the references as we go. Let's rock and roll. The beat is fire though. Okay, first off, I know we're pausing straight out the gate, but their makeup work is always on point. Like, it's absolutely epic. Like, <laughs> Pete and Lloyd have just gotten so good at their makeup and acting, it's just ridiculous. Like, that is actually creepy. Like, that is genuinely creepy. All right, let's go. City needs some medicine red. My lines are a production. Your lines are red. This is Evelyn Time Pieces. Is how I got my start now. Watch me tear your ideology apart. You screw. Okay, so first off, we knew that some kind of communists are hungry gag was going to be in here. And it is a joke that is not without being earned. But it's not unique to communist states. It's just that communist authoritarian states have had far higher uh, instances of famine and food production issues, mainly due to collectivization and centralization and the destruction of the uh, farmer class. Because, turns out, if farmers aren't able to run their own businesses and manage things, they can't, you know, trade properly, set prices, compete in the market, so, you know, production falls. And if you centralize bureaucracy away from the farmers who are on the ground, making things work and instead put it in some bureaucrat's hands who doesn't know a first thing about farming turns out your farms don't work very well now the same problem hit both fascist italy and nazi germany they compensated by taking everyone else's food the communist countries didn't do that they instead concentrated the remaining food in the urban centers to follow industrialization so Red lines eventually happened, and when the collapse of the Soviet Union took place, again, economic austerity and scarcity pretty much ruined it. So, there you go. But we knew that joke was coming, and it's a, and it's a, it's a decent bar to open with. It's a decent bar to open with, so I've got to give Henry that. You scream, unite the workers, free the glass slaves! Lose your chain, trade them in for mass graves! Smile with Stalin, wow, appalling mounds of body pain! When a world leader likes you, that's a red flag! I okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> if the world leader likes you, that's a red flag. Okay, that's a good wordplay. I gotta give him that. I gotta give him that. Um, and yeah, again, both fair criticisms, 100%. I am no fan of Stalin or Mao for that precise reason. They have a tendency to centralize power into a singular area. And when you do that, turns out bureaucrats abuse that power and the leader themselves can abuse that power. And, uh, well... Uh, people who don't conform to the regime end up meeting a sticky end. Or in the case of industrialization and collectivization of the farms, again, same principle, the famine causes mass graves and people who defy the orders of the state to try and rectify said famine are also put in mass graves and uh, when they need a new industrial labor force, well again, you need to make people work harder. And uh, you know, a free trip to Siberia. So, yeah. Again, good bars expected. They're a bit obvious. But, you know, it's a fair it's a fair hit from Henry. So, we'll, yeah. I'll put the uh, figures for total deaths under Mao and Stalin on screen for you to give you a bit of a historical reference. But we shall uh, go forward. 
produce with my two hands. You're a destitute tramp. Scheming to trade bootstraps in for food stamps. Any person tries to seize my private property will catch a tall grand to his private pot properly. Again, an accurate bar, a very good one from Henry. Marx was pretty much broke for his whole life. He was consistently broke, constantly. And it is a bit inaccurate to say that he never held down a real job. He did. He worked at various newspapers and publications. Unless you don't consider journalism a real job, in which case that's fair enough. I'm a YouTuber and a part-time journalist, which how that happened, I have no idea. But uh, Putin started a war, so here we go. And so, yeah, if Marx never had a real job, neither did I. But, you know, well, it is what it is. But so that's a fair criticism. He survived off of loans from his various relatives and from the patronage of his best friend, Friedrich Engels. I'll put on screen for you now. Trading in bootstraps for food stamps. Again, pulling yourself up by your bootstraps is a oxymoron because, you know, you can't pull yourself up by your bootstraps. It's impossible. And it was a term invented to ridicule the self-made man trope of capitalism. However, again, the idea that uh, socialism breeds reliance on the state is also a common counterpoint to socialism. And there is a grain of truth in that. There is absolutely a grain of truth in that. Though worker-owned means of production and how it's organized is really what that's dependent on. But yeah, good bars from Henry still. Well... To seize my private property, will catch a tall grand to his private pot properly. Who takes advice from a broke slob? It's laughable. I wouldn't wipe my tailpipe with your dash crap at all. If you'd save the penny for his daughter you named Jenny, you might not have needed to bury quite so many. <laughs> Holy shit. God. God damn, Henry. God. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yes, Karl Marx lost a number of his children to disease and infirmities and the cold and, quite frankly, poverty. Straightforward. Uh, Marx, in his later life, very well struggled to put food on the table for his family, and he had a very large family, and so there were quite a number of his children who died due to lack of access to healthcare, quality nutrition, etc. Which is, you know, funny that though, Henry. It's it's rather interesting you point that out, that uh, capitalism and societies which are reliant on wealth to purchase access to goods such as healthcare and stuff like that. Turns out, when you have a system like that, People don't have access to health care, they have lower health outcomes. So, um, well, just uh, look at your country and look at Detroit today, my guy. See how that goes. But Jesus, that was, that was a savage bar. God damn. God damn. Who's that crowd, young Nogalian, heavy drinking? Oh, here comes our boy. Hold on, we gotta rewind a bit. Here comes our boy. Here comes Carl. Who's that proud young Nogalian heavy drinking card carrying? Future thinking legal letter income proletarian is Karl Marx! So there's a lot in there. There's a lot in there. Like seriously, like you look at his intro there, that was absolutely wild. So he was a heavy drinking card carrying, so he was actually the leader of a drinking society in Trier in Germany when he was going to university there. He was the leader of the society for a good number of years. Uh, he was also quite rambunctious. People sort of view him as this old grandpa for most of his life, but when he was younger, there's a good movie called The Young Karl Marx, but when he was younger, old Karl here was very well known for leading absolutely ridiculous drunken debate sessions. If any of you have been a member of the Debate Society, the Debate Society drinks harder than any other group except maybe the nursing students. I was in the Debating Society when I was in university, obviously, and yeah, it gets it gets pretty wild. But Carl got even wild. Carl was known to have fist fights. He would actually have fist fights over disagreements in political theory. Like they would start full scale brawls and he actually had to pay damages to various bars, which sent him bankrupt and it pissed his dad off to no end. Uh, 
It also mentions Lincoln letter inking proletarian. It is very well known that Karl Marx had correspondence with Abraham Lincoln. It's one thing that gets brought up to Republicans who very much don't like it. Uh, but Karl Marx was very much involved in support in Europe. He was very much behind the support in Europe for the Union cause in abolishing slavery. He was very active in Europe for the abolitionist movement in the United States. So, which makes sense, communist, anti-slavery, you know. Well, depending which kind of communist you are. I mean, uh, old mate Joseph and uh, Mao Zedong might have different views on that, but uh, don't let the tanky rage consume you. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, that one. That, <laughs> yeah, that one was coming. For those of you who don't know, uh, Henry Ford was mentioned in Mein Kampf. He was directly named by Adolf Hitler while writing it. The reason he got this shout out is because of Henry Ford's actions to combat international jury via his publication of the Dearborn Independent and the circulation of the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, both of which Henry Ford was responsible for. Henry Ford is pretty much the father of what we would consider modern anti-Semitism, which is very topical in the world today, given what's happening in certain parts of the world. So yes, that's a very devastating bar. He was also the one of the only recipients of, of Nazi Germany's highest award for a foreigner or a foreign citizen that could be awarded, which is the Grand Cross of the German Eagle, or the Grand Order of the German Eagle, rather, I believe. I'll put Henry Ford receiving that up on screen for you. An award he shared with the other major member of America First, the isolationist movement, Charles Lindbergh, who is also an anti-Semite and a friend of Henry Ford, a very good friend of Henry Ford. So yeah, we all knew that bar was coming, and it's a pretty devastating one. Your name and mine come. My codes of didn't cause mass grief. We did. You get that from books, but you didn't read shit. <laughs> so that bar is pretty is pretty good because it's it's multi layered, right? It's multi layered that bar because first, my ideology didn't cause mass graves. Greed did so taking a jab at Stalin and Mao and other authoritarian leaders who took power and wanted to abuse that power. Greed, centralization of control in the uh, single party socialist state caused that, the corruption of absolute power, etc, etc. But that thing about you didn't get that from books, you got that from books, but you didn't read them or where we go, but you didn't read shit. Yeah, look, there you go. That is a big critique that you can level at a lot of leftists. Leftists will read hours and hours and hours of theory from a bunch of different people, but they won't actually understand it or internalize it, or more likely than not, extrapolate it into reality. Which is why you have all those socialist societies like Socialist Alternative and so forth on university campuses, handing out newspaper, uh, newspapers rather and making big speeches only to not understand a single thing they're talking about. It is very common. You didn't read shit. Your self-made man studies wrong from a tourist. Your daddy's the ants gave you a free fall of a tourist. You were the first of six kids till the seventh killed your mother. Maybe that's why you spied at your oh. workers like big brother. Oh, okay. So, yes. It's amazing how often you find that. Henry Ford as well. But you also see people like uh, Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos, just to pick two random examples. Every time you hear these stories about self-made millionaires, I'm so good, I made myself, I built these big businesses and I'm great. It uh, turns out nine times out of 10, they weren't, not at all. Elon Musk, uh, well, his dad may or may not have, you know, engaged in a little bit of apartheid propagating diamond mines you know blood diamonds just just a little bit and as for jeff bezos uh, he has a very similar origin story to our dear friend the 45th president of the united states donald j trump in that he got a small load of a million dollars uh jeff bezos got a huge startup loan to start amazon from his parents uh very similar to henry ford here so 
you know, as for the other half of that bar, yes, Henry Ford employed people at much higher wages and better conditions than most people. And everyone thought that was like really progressive forward thinking, but it was a trade-off. It was basically indentured servitude because in exchange for that, you couldn't join a union. You couldn't have any exterior associations. You had to be a Christian. You had to follow strict Christian conservative values and your wife couldn't work. Your wife had to stay home, do housework and make babies do all that and there was all these different rules and regulations you had to follow and he actually had a gestapo he built his own secret police force to spy on his employees they would go into your house and inspect to make sure that you were following the company's rules absolutely brutal extra history did a great episode or rather a great series on henry ford and they go into that in more detail and it's oh man it's brutal it's brutal like big brother your model t total lack of style is killing me they can't take shit from you according to ability do what your first car can't take back up beating me is like your city in brazil Nuts. okay that bar was a bit weak that bar was like brazil nuts i mean haha wordplay i get it I mean, it's a reference to Fordlandia, so if, in case you don't know, Fordlandia was a rubber plantation model town set up by Ford in Brazil to produce rubber for tires for Ford Motors, and they were going to set it up like a picturesque American town, like it had, you know, the post office, the white picket fences, you know, warehouses and stuff, all made in the North American style. And it was set up to sort of grow rubber plantations. It failed massively. Like, it failed massively because all of the, you know, common practices that were put in place in Ford Motors were brought over to this place as well. And so they banned pretty much everything that, you know, Brazilian laborers like to do. Uh, alcohol, women, tobacco, football, like soccer was all banned like you had to follow the purity rules set down by uh ford motors and all that sort of thing and they had no idea how to properly grow rubber they didn't actually hire any people to run the thing so all of their crops died and everything went to hell and eventually the workers there unionized and rebelled and it took the brazilian army to come in and put it down like it was a complete, a, like a complete disaster, a complete failure. And so that's what this is a reference to. But like, was Brazil nuts? Like, I know you wanted to work the reference in, but Brazil nuts? <sighs> okay. I, uh, yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's good. It's clever, but um, yeah. But his attack on the Model T lack of style is actually true. Because that's why his son Ebsen and later Henry Ford II, as well as the other members of Ford Motor Company, stepped in and took over from Henry and tried to push him out, is because he just kept making the Model T over and over. He just kept repeatingly the Model T design. And Chevrolet, GM, other, other major companies started producing luxury model cars and changing up their style and producing different models with different price ranges every year to sort of build that consumer hype which makes sense you got to have that consumer confidence in the market and that want to buy stuff so yeah that is a pretty good burn but it's, it's all i mean carl's doing okay it's pretty even with the mind camp bar but uh i don't know i still think henry's got this one so far don't step that close without some beer jam poo, son. You lived in Cologne. Look like you could've used some. Uh, I took a style like a dipstick grips oil. You look as sick as your chronic dick boil. I'm mass producing abuse on a utopian hobo. Okay, so yeah, that's 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 pretty good. So yes, Karl Marx did suffer from medical ailments to his uh to his uh gentlemanly prowess. And talking about drip and you know, you need some cologne. You look like a hobo. Look, fair. You see, I maintain that Karl Marx and other left-wing thinkers of the uh, 
industrial age and the late 19th, early 20th century. Basically, what I'm saying is leftists have been terminally online since 100 years before the internet was invented. Like, leftists are terminally online, just by definition. They are, they are absolutely insufferable for a reason. I should know, I'm one of them. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, so that's a, a utopian hobo. Yeah, that's... God damn. God damn, Henry's cooking right now. Oh, I'm throwing you for loops like the F in my logo. I gave men work, you brought nothing but harm. Take your boots, why pig shit back to animal farm? Yeesh, oh. the factory conditions were bleak. Crap of machines, cranking out four separate fingers a week. Oof. Okay, so the animal farm bar was pretty hot, but... Ouch, now Marx is starting to cook. Okay. Four severed fingers a week. Yeah, so industrial safety in Ford's factories early on because he was pioneering the assembly line was bad. There were no safety regulations back then. OHS didn't exist. It was, you know, non exist like high vis was a glimmer in the mind's eye. Like hard hats, who needs them? You know, safety procedures, you know, well, nah, you don't need those. OSHA violations for years, not days. Pig shit back to animal farm! Yes. Your factory conditions were bleak, crap of machines, cranking out four severed fingers a week. Your controlled with employees could think, drink, and eat. And when they march for better wages, shut them dead in the street. Oof. Yep. Yep. The actions by Ford Motor Companies against their unions were brutal. And yes. They did call in uh, private agencies, similar to the Pinkertons, as well as the Pinkertons themselves, I believe, to violently persecute and put down union organizers. And some of them were murdered. Yes. So that's... Uh, <laughs> oh, damn. In there, as, as I mentioned before, you control what they think, drink, and eat, right? Yeah, so... Rolled with employees, good things, drink and eat And when they march for better wages, shut them dead in the street In truth, what you produce for alienated working men Who would clock into Detroit and lose themselves like Eminem And now your Great Lakes State ain't exactly a great sight yeah. You were worse for Michigan than Fritz water bites uh. Ooh, God Alright, okay That was pretty fire Like, the Eminem bar absolutely slapped Alienations, okay, so alienation is a big theory that Marx posits where a person is alienated from their labor. The best way I can sort of describe it, it's a bit of a sort of esoteric concept, but basically because a worker is not actually directly benefiting from their labor, they're getting a wage, and because that production and that product isn't actually directly benefiting them, most of the time they can't even buy what they are producing or can't afford what they're producing in all the cases. It alienates you from your labor. You have no connection. You have no self-worth. You have no sense of accomplishment or achievement in what you have done with your work. It's simply a mechanical process. It's the assembly line. It's, you know, when you're working that nine to five at a call center or you're in a factory and you do the same thing over and over again, you feel alienation. You don't get any satisfaction from your work. And that alienation of labor combined with the lack of benefit from your labor and the lack of direct compensation for your labor, like wage theft being a big one, uh, results in alienation from your labor and therefore lower morale and eventually the descent into uh, mental trauma and uh, revolutionary fervor with lower living conditions with the falling rate of profit. But that's a lot of Marxist theory. I'd, you can find better people to talk about than that. My friend Freda might be a better chance for that, but worse for Michigan than Flint's water pipes. I mean, you see, the thing is with Henry Ford is while it's not looking so good now, after the unions got involved and more regulation was put in and Ford Motor Company hit the era of the Mustang and Motown started developing, Detroit was actually, Motor City, like that was actually a pretty good place to be. Living standards in Detroit were pretty high, so I, that bar, I'm not so sure. Like, capitalism, like, Karl Marx himself should know better, actually, because Karl Marx's theory talks about the productive forces of capital and how they improve things, and so, you know, it's really, I don't think Karl would say that, because, if I may quote Jeremy Clarkson, 
and just substitute something out here. Jeremy Clarkson says this about Alfa Romeos. Karl Marx says this about capitalism. It is a system designed to be as good as something can be briefly. Right now, we're entering into late-stage capitalism with inflation, cost of living crisis, housing crisis, etc. Capitalism is starting to implode on itself. But for that moment, like, you know, the 50s, 60s, early 70s, for that moment, capitalism was sick. It was great. Everything was awesome because you've reached that sort of crest of, pub of productive forces. So, you know, I can't give Carl that one. Your gripes about oppression don't leave me impressed You're not hot, Carl, that's just shit on your chest But a man of state less, you got an awful lot to say I pay you five dollars a day to go away and Bloody angles bankrolls you with the textile bill I guess the capitalists are cool when they're paying your bills your Oof Yep, Engels was rich Engels was rich And bankrolled Karl Marx, so yep That's a, that's a pretty sick, but also a scat joke <laughs> But the big one there is, of course, $5 a day. That's what Henry Ford was famous for. He paid a wage of $5 a day, which at the time was incredibly, incredibly valuable. That was, that was insane wages for the time. So there you go. Absolutely. That, ah, oof. Oof. Oh, running a textile mill with all the uh, occupational health and safety issues and the wage issues of uh, the Victorian era. Goddamn, Engels, oof. A hypocrite, I think we just love a substance issue. Step off your soapbox, take the soap with you. Look, dummy, shedding money is the communist vision. Angle's bank was the crank that got the revolution spinning. All right, there you go. So, yeah, just jokes about his bad hygiene, which look at that beard and hair, man. Yeah, bad hygiene, but. This is a good line. So yeah, that, that's a good rebuttal. Engels, Engels backed me because he wanted to get the revolution going. So yes, that is why. I also love the fact that they got a... a is that like an actual Model T? It, it looks like an actual... The man, They actually managed to get one. That is kind of awesome. I like that. I, I really do like that. We gave everything to see the common people and fans have sold down with the cause. I even pawned my own hats. You grew so out of touch with Sabaton's your only kid. It's a stomach cancer showed more love than you did. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God damn, Carl. Oh, that's a low blow. Ooh, damn. 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 So, yeah, things got bad, and yes... Karl Marx pawned off a lot of his possessions, including his pants. Yes, that is, that is true. But what's also true is, yes, the stress and constant falling out with his father through running Ford Motor Company practically killed Edsel Ford, which is why Henry Ford II took over the business later on the line, because Edsel originally was in charge, but oh, Henry Ford treated Edsel awfully absolutely awfully like he hated him he basically shat on him any chance he could get and yeah the stress caused him death and an, uh, like death in an early grave like just straight up like his condition was worsened by henry ford's treatment of him and there's no doubts about that so yeah oh boy Oof. And you did so congrats, your legacy is an ashes Remembered as the fascist sympathizing cause of climate change and car crashes From your newspaper to your Nazi factory cross the board Frankly, Hank, it's clear as which side you are on Oh, god damn Oh, battle over Battle over Nah, nah, nah Nah, 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 Um what is it that uh, Screwface John says? Uh, Don DeMarco? Oh, oh, god damn. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's brutal. That is... That is... Oh, god damn. Okay. So, yes, Ford Motor Company was a big part of German rearmament. They were definitely a big part of German rearmament, and... Fun fact, when the Allied Air Forces bombed Ford's plant in Germany, they actually had to pay Henry Ford damages for breaking his stuff, and they had to pay Ford Motor Company the damages for blowing up their German factory, which had been taken over by the Nazis. And it is unconfirmed, but yes, we do know that labor from Auschwitz-Birkenau was used in Ford's German factory during the war. 
I can put uh, photos on screen of Ford trucks in the German army invading the Soviet Union in 1941. Before America entered the war, Ford Motor Company was openly working for the Nazi party and Henry Ford himself, it is rumored, not confirmed, made large contributions to the Nazi party. Henry Ford, actually, there was a photo of Adolf Hitler in uh, Henry Ford's office and vice versa. So the story goes. But, uh, Oh man, battle over. This battle's gonna blow up like that hemorrhage in your head. I'll leave a floor as expected. Sun on road dead. Nah. Fix or repair daily. Found on. Re nah, 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 nah. That that's 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 just just. It was pretty even towards the end until until that. No. Oh. My own bias aside. Oh god damn. Oh. Wrecked. Wrecked. Karl Marx. Just like it was it was like 64. I was I was leaning pretty even to towards Henry Ford. You know, throughout that battle that that last round. God no. Nah. <laughs> oh. Nah, that's game over. Anyway, just a fun little video I thought I'd put out today, guys, given that this dropped. You know, um, I hope you learned something in case you needed a bit more context. To any new followers or subscribers from this video, hi. Hope you learned something. If not, well, I, I highly suggest you go watch Epic Rap Battles of History uh, on their channel to watch the full battle in case you uh, got annoyed at me pausing and stopping and starting. But anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. You have a good day.